Hey friends, happy Monday. I just got back from a weekend at my parents and it was really relaxing, um, but time to get ready for the week. I literally never meal prep because I, one, just have a craving for all kinds of things all the time and I feel like meal prepping is kind of restrictive and it's like doesn't, whenever I prep ahead, it's like never what I want to eat. Um, and also the downside to like knowing how to cook is that I literally with the most humble attitude I can cook whatever I want and when I'm craving it which is like really dangerous for example if I'm like oh I really want like a blueberry cheesecake with like a cinnamon crust unfortunately I know how to make that and I'm pretty fast so I could make it in an hour and so that is like the upsides and downsides of being able to create food that I like eating and wanting. But today is a rare occasion because we are meal prepping in the sense that I do like having some things on hand. I'm really trying to focus on my business this week um, and all the time. Um, and it's just nice to have a few things on hand. So this is not fancy, but these are just a few easy things that I prepped um, that kind of can go with anything, bowl, salad, whatever. Um, and I'm going to show you. On the left, I do love having roasted sweet potatoes. They're great for scrambles, for salads, for bowls, um, stir fry. So roasted some of those with my dad's homemade seasoning. And then I did roast some chickpeas with curry seasoning. I just, I don't know, curry and chickpeas has been like a really good um, flavor profile for me lately. And I do like them when they're a little like toasted and crunchy. I don't like them soft and weird. Um, and then here I made a homemade dressing. I just kind of made it up as I went, but pretty much your basics like Dijon mustard, olive oil, red wine vinegar, salt, pepper, garlic, I think that was it. Maybe, you know, maple syrup for a little bit sooner, you could do honey. Um, got some berries, these are actually from last week. Um, and then strawberries, so there's like a thousand hacks online and I think the one that I found works the best is take them out of the plastic container that you get them in with the holes put them in an air seal tight container, put a paper towel in them and do not wash them um, until you are ready to eat them. This has kept my strawberries fresh for so long. Um, and then my favorite stasher bag, I just cleaned some kale. Um, again, salad bowls, I don't really know what to do with this. I probably honestly would use a, I sometimes use like giant plastic bags, but the stasher fit it and then, um, I had some leftover brussels and carrots I found at the bottom of a bin so I thought roast them with some soy sauce and maple or sorry soy sauce and balsamic um honestly if you've never put those two together it is just chef's kiss it's sweet and salty and it's just a great great flavor profile as well um I just hard boiled some eggs again weirdly craving hard boiled eggs what is that that's a piece of pepper um I never hard boiled eggs, I usually scramble them, but thought it'd be fun this week. And then these are also from last week. These are like a protein cashew butter um, ball bite. And then last but not least, I am with my Dutch oven. I'm about to make some shredded chicken in the oven. I do love, actually I haven't had shredded chicken in so long, but shredded chicken is great bland because you can make it, you know, put it in a taco, you can put it in a stir fry, you can put it in a salad. So Keeping flavor profiles pretty bland makes up for kind of having some things ready on deck, but also being able to make whatever you want. So you can make an egg salad, you could, you know, put on top of oatmeal, you could put on toast, you could eat them plain with the hummus. So I like trying to keep some things done. My oven has a whole opera. Time to put the chicken in. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bit of behind the scenes. And then of course I supplement with like grains and yogurt and pastas and brown rice. But that's a little bit of the meal prep for this week. Also other things I forgot to mention, I'm kind of supplement with um, nuts, olive oils, avocado, um, yogurt. Obviously that was not a full meal prep. Those are more just things that you can like cook to have on hand when you need, um, you know, something quick. Um, that said, I have no idea what I am going to make for lunch, so let's see if I can think of something fun because typically all I want to do after I meal prep is eat all the food that I just meal prep, which is kind of like redundant. <laughs> um, but hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will be sharing some fun, um, some fun new content. Um, if you haven't, follow along. Um, all my links are below. 
um, and thanks for being here. Stop. <laughs> I just <laughs> was talking to the camera for the last three minutes and realized I wasn't recording. So let's restart. Um, it is Tuesday, I think. Um, uh, shooting, also look at how pretty this one is. Like very aesthetic, I would totally eat it. Um, it's got like roasted spring veggies, some fennel, radish, all the things. Um, but what I was trying to go with, with the last four minutes of me talking to no one was Every so often, or you know, when I have a bunch of different clients, not all of their styles are the same. And it can be kind of a juggling act of, you know, shooting with natural light for some, hard flash, hard lighting for others, being quirky, being serious, being minimalist um, for a bunch of different brands. And it is so much fun to kind of make my brain work in different ways, but it can get a little confusing and you know, I, as a photographer, love to work collaboratively with my clients, but also putting in my own kind of spin on things. But I think there's kind of a weird gray line between <clears throat> what I think looks good versus what a client might want. And so one, it's really important to kind of have that conversation like what they're looking for. I love asking for inspiration photos, but also um, a shooting tip is with all these different clients, I really try not to shoot various clients on the same day that said like with this recipe it got me thinking because it was like pretty in spring um i'm using natural light um i made the mistake of trying to jump back and forth between different brands and first of all super inefficient switching out lighting backwards etc but it also kind of keeps your mind in tunnel vision and like in the same brain environment for one brand at a time versus trying to do like five different brands and five different shoots in a day. Um, also, my camera is about to die, so I'll leave it at that. But if you have any more questions or tips um, that you want to hear about, that's um, just let me know below. I am in line at Jiffy Lube and I promise you the minute I start recording, I bet you anything, they're gonna come around and ask me um, what I'm here for. But until then, I am getting an oil change for no one that cares. And then I'm going to a spring equinox party at my girlfriend's. And um, there'll be just a small group of women. And, you know, I started actually having two spring equinox parties, which is just a thing we're doing. Um, but we are having some goodies and we are kind of just sharing um, for just some really intentional time on, like, whatever poem quote story um we wanted to bring tonight to kind of um symbolize spring and just kind of like the new season um so like me i spent all day freaking out and thinking about a poem a quote a story and i tried to be overproductive with something to bring and i did ended up having nothing to bring and also ironically, I was reading a new book I just started called How to Do Nothing, which is like an oxymoron in itself um, and kind of like how to um, kind of reground and put yourself in a biogeographical and like place that is outside of like the time productivity kind of marathon that we run. Um, and it kind of got me thinking about how, um, pause. Okay, re-pause. I thought they were coming to talk to me. Um, but it kind of got me thinking about how there is this, you know, with spring and the blooming season, um, as much as blooming flowers and just like, um, beautiful things come from growth, uh, there's no part 
of grinding and mm. we are just setting up for the party right now and i have to say being friends with someone that lives on a boat or has a boat to host on is chef's kiss spring summer thank you caitlin love you so much but so excited to spend some intentional time with girls i did not finish the last thought at jiffy lou because Obviously, I was getting my stuff done, but hopefully I can finish it here. Um, but really what I wanted to say was that spring blooming, um, as much as I like wanted to be prepared to bring something tonight, I think that force um, of like being productive and being in front of the game does not align with like blooming, which happens in its exact right time. There's no external force or productivity that can like speed up a flower and blossoming. It just doesn't itself in its own time and I'm learning to do nothing like a blossoming flower. Today I am shooting a little informational reel. I'm trying to be better about um, some photography education, but wanted to show you here on YouTube as well. Um, today I'm gonna shoot the same exact dish in the same exact setting with two different lenses so you can kind of see the difference between um, what I'm using is a 35 millimeter lens and then a macro 105 millimeter lens. Both of my lenses are Sigma. Um, my camera is an a, it's a Sony a7R III. Um, I'm gonna keep this camera in the same exact place, shoot the same exact food, and then you can kind of see the difference between framing. Uh, I know when I started in photography, I was like, I have no idea what these lens things means. What does that mean? I'm way more visual. So this is kind of the visual for those wondering, like what should be your first lens? What should be your second lens? Um, especially in food photography, obviously, if you're doing up close shots, drip, dribbles, swoops, like splashes, um, a macro is really great, but if you're shooting like a table spread, you know, the Thanksgiving spread, um, or just like your day to day, I really love my 35 millimeter. These are both prime lenses, AKA they don't zoom. Um, that's something I learned too. And I used to always shoot with a zoom lens, but this is before I did food photography. So um, prime lenses is kind of what I lean to now. I really only have two lenses and do all my work with those, but I know if I'm traveling or something, or if you're a big traveler, zoom is really great. You know, like if you're seeing a giraffe in a safari, you can't get up close. The zoom is very handy, but with food where you can get as close as you want, um, I like having my prime. So I'm gonna shoot this guy with this exact setting. I'm gonna use this balance board, um, literally from a craft store. I think it was like a dollar. Um, Cause I didn't really frame this photo to be like the most beautiful thing. It's more about kind of, oh, we got a little bubble. Ooh. Um, kind of the, showcase of how the different lenses frame. So I got my 35 millimeter shot. Now I'm gonna turn it off and switch to my, oh my gosh, I almost took off. Um, I'm gonna do this, whoa, the best I can without changing the positioning. Um, but for those of you wondering, this is the Ooh, the lighting in here, you cannot see that, but the Sigma. Okay, now I'm going to use the 105. Again, the lighting here, not the best, but you can kind of get it. It says macro right there. Um, Sigma, so let's attach this guy. Do, do, do. Wait for that click. Probably could have tightened that. Oh my gosh, this thing is falling. Okay, now we're gonna do the 105 lens. Turn this guy on. Again, I have not moved this at all. Wow, this is so close. You can't even see the, <laughs> you can't even see the toast. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Okay, well, this is a great example. I moved it a little because, um, oh my gosh, yeah, you can't even see the toast. This is like the chia seeds are crazy in focus. You cannot even see the full toast. So 
This will be a great example of how up close this gets to the shot. Um, yeah, that's great for detail, but if I really want to frame this and use the macro, but get this lens in, this, let's see how far I'd have to get back. I was on this on tripod. I'd have to get it back this far to be similar to what my previous photo was. So that was probably like a good one and a half feet away from where it was. Um, but I do love this macro lens. You can get such good detail, but alas, this is not what I'm excited to show you guys these photos because this is so it's such a beautiful lens, but it's way too close for just regular food boxes. So that is the two lenses I use. Um, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> I just filmed both this YouTube and that reel, and that was too many cameras on me at once. But um, I'll show you guys. I think you can head over to my Instagram too. I'll probably be posting this around the same time so you can see uh, what like these photos turned out. Also, if you're wondering, this is what we got. I made this like blueberry compote. I put some coconut cream on it because I forgot to, I opened a can of coconut cream thinking it was coconut milk and then I had nothing to do with it. So that is where that went. Added some chia seeds, walnuts, um, but really great texture and you'll get to see in the, the photos. Okay, so I just got done filming that little IG reel, maybe a shorts um, tutorial, and something that kind of came across my mind was, so I really used to have a love-hate relationship with social media, and literally this thought popped into my head that if I keep saying that I have a love-hate relationship, that hate part is gonna hinder me a lot from what social media can give me, and I'm all about getting what you deserve, like taking, what you can from social media to benefit you because honestly i have no shame in saying that i'm using social media to build my brand build my business and i do not have time for the bots the negativity the comparison like it's really easy to get caught in that part of the hate game but i also one don't have to say i love social media either like that is also not 100 percent true but saying i love hate relationship like i feel like that version of hate towards social media is really going to hinder me from growing in my um ways that i didn't think social media could help me grow and so i'm trying to find a different way to talk about social media um here's the thing social media owes you nothing it is not a person it is not your friend it is not your parent and it's not your spouse like it is a like material thing and it's up to you to figure out how you want to use it and how it can benefit you because that is where the fun comes in. Um, benefit being maybe it's just a place for you to catch up on your friends and you get to catch up on their lives. Like that is a benefit. Like being able to connect with people far away, that is a benefit. Um, I'm not saying I love social media, do not get me wrong, but I'm trying to remove the word love hate from social media because I really do want to grow and figure out how social media, whether it's posting once a week, once a day, once a month, um, can help me get where I want to be because like unselfishly that is my purpose on social media um, obviously to connect with people to share my story to hear from others to learn about other people and communities and cultures and like obviously the biggest purpose on social media that is not like mind consuming is being connected and I, I've always been a connector among friends. I've always wanted to connect this person with this person, this person with this person. But um, learning to not say that I hate social media because I don't want it to like block me from whatever capacity and growth and just like explosion that I could have. So if you're at all in the same boat, boat as me, let me know. Um, who knows tomorrow i might just say i absolutely hate it but for now i'm trying to be more neutral about social media um neither bad nor either good just neutral but let's turn into something really awesome oh and also if you don't follow me on any other platforms there's way too many platforms but i would probably say instagram apart from youtube is where the magic happens so um check out the links below my instagram TikTok, that's a whole nother story, but there is a link for TikTok below. Um, and then also if you're interested in working with me, my website's below too. So 
I will go and clean this up and then take you along for the rest of the day. These fools are playing, baby, I can show you so much Okay, so I just went to one of my favorite coffee shops, Retreat, if you know, you know. And I got this wellness latte, which I typically don't get anything fancy, but it's activated charcoal, ginger, tocos, vanilla, and espresso with oat milk. And oh my gosh, I might actually start ordering, ordering this more. Also, I used to be one of those people that went out and got like a $7 coffee or something. Um, and we have nixed that habit. One, because we need to save money. Um, and two, you can always make stuff at home. But I had to treat myself mostly because I was supposed to meet with someone and they didn't end up showing up. So I was like a little mini pissed. But um, that's okay. Got myself a nice cute little coffee. And then I am going to go home. And at least I got some brainstorming done at the coffee shop. Um, and then go shoot some stuff. And um, I'm eating a very basic meal. Um, egg white oatmeal with some vanilla, cinnamon, strawberries. Um, the thing that I was gonna shoot though, I forgot that it was in the freezer and it needs to be thawed. So here I am pivoting and trying to figure out what to do with my day, which is when I say it out loud, it's such a blessing because I have, you know, days where I have like a lot of free time. And so I'm trying not to go down a rabbit hole of just like watching YouTube videos. Um, but I'm gonna actually go make some like content for myself. Um, and it's kind of good for me to, outside of my job, stay creative um, and just make things that I like to do. So if you got any recipe recs or looking for something, let me know because I'll probably be making them in the next coming weeks.